Finally, before we pray, why you must be in church and be planted in God's house. Very quickly before we pray, why you must be in church and be planted in God's house. Very important. Six points and then we pray. Number one, why you must be in church and be planted in God's house. For thorough discipleship, growth, and transformation. For thorough discipleship, growth, and transformation. You need to be thoroughly discipled. You need to be methodically mentored. The Christian life is not a spontaneous life as it were. There is a model. It is well structured. There is a model and a curriculum that you must be discipled after. You must be trained after. And you must submit yourself in that corporate gathering to be thoroughly disciples. You know, the problem we have with a lot of believers is what is more profitable to them is what they don't want to sacrifice for. I'm sorry if I'm touching you today, but I have this is the word of God for you today. Be planted. Number two, why you must be in church and be planted in God's house? For service in the house of God. Service. For the purpose of service in the house of God. Remember that in Luke chapter 4 verse 8, Jesus quoted one of the laws to the devil during the temptation. He said, you shall worship the Lord your God only, and him only you shall serve. In Mark chapter 12, in verse 30, Jesus was talking to the rich young ruler, and he gave him the greatest commandment. He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with what? All your strength. Mark says, all your strength for service. It's not just enough to belong. You must be active actively participate in the service that is in the house of God. Let me show you some of the blessings of serving in the house of God. Numerous, numerous. Exodus 23 verse 25 to 26. And you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and water. He says, and I will take away these sicknesses and affliction from thee. He says, from the midst of you. And no one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. Ladies, say amen to that. And I will fulfill the number of your days. All of this is an allocation for servants in the house of God. Come bless the Lord. Come bless the O ye servants of the Lord. O ye servants of the Lord. Who stand by night? It's an old song we used to sing those days. In the house of the Lord. I like this part. Lift up your hands. To the whole. serving in the house of God in the house of your father remember when they met Jesus you know when they went for the feast in Jerusalem and they came back without Jesus they went back looking for him after three days they found him in the temple what did he tell them he said didn't you know that I will be about my father's business you have not treated him as your father that's why you are not concerned about work in the house of God why you must be in church and be planted in God's house. Number three, for personal accountability and submission to God's order. For personal accountability. Do you know that your salvation needs to be accountable to someone? Your life as a believer, you need to be accountable to an authority. You can't just stay alone and decide to be Lord over your life, just you and God. 
I'll make room for two. Just you and I, Jesus. No, 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 no. You need a system in the church that you can be held accountable to. Many believers are afraid of accountability. That's why they don't want to be part of a church. You don't want anybody to watch your life. You want to still do the things that you used to do. Once in two weeks, you still go to the club and take one bottle and come back. Or as an elder in church, you still go and play pool. You know pool? You know pool? You don't know pool? What do you call it? Cha-cha? I don't know. <laughs> gambling. Let me not say anything about gambling. No, I choose to say nothing about it. Many believers don't want to be... But you need... That, and that is what keeps your life in check. The real one of the real ways to maintain a lifestyle of holiness and righteousness in this corrupt and wicked world is when you are accountable to a body, accountable to an individual, an authority system. Number five, for the experience of corporate fellowship with the brethren, why you must be in church and be planted in the house of God. For the experience of corporate fellowship with the brethren. For the exclusive experience of corporate fellowship. Corporate fellowship. You come depressed and hear, you hear testimonies about what God is doing in another person's life. And then you connect to it. We have had testimonies like that here. Yeah. People came and heard other testimonies. Tapped into it by faith. And it replicated itself. You think you will see that if you are at home? Isolation is not good. I know a lot of believers have been hurt. The reason why many people leave church is because they have been hurt either by fellow church members or by church authorities or they are burdened by the lack of character or character inconsistency that you find in church. It is true. And on behalf of the church, I want to stand with every man of God to apologize for that. But listen to me brothers and sisters we are only humans if you are dealing with human beings you must create accommodation in your heart for their humanity it will show up someday it is a perfect bride a perfect church made up of imperfect individuals So I pray that God is going to heal the heart of somebody's heart today. And you will go back to church. For spiritual protection and preservation of personal destiny. Why you must be in church and be planted in God's house. Final point. For spiritual protection and preservation of personal destiny. Do you know that your life is preserved in the fold? What did, you, what did God tell Abraham? He said, if I find 50 people in Sodom, I will spare them. Down to 10, they, at least there should be more than one. Strength is in numbers. Whether you believe it or not. The devil is afraid of numbers. How was Dorcas raised back to, restored back to life? She was in a company, a fold. They sent, the disciples sent. Imagine if Dorcas was alone. She had died there. Her family people would come and bury her. The Bible says when she died, the disciples washed her and they sent for Peter. They said, come. That thing you used to do there, come and do it here. And as soon as Peter entered, they started showing him all the clothes that she had made. All her charitable deeds, which is very important to do in the body of Christ. So in fact, the Bible says, do good to all men, especially to those who are of the household of faith. So as we, are, as we close now, we are leaving. You drove your car alone and came. Thank God. Are you going to drive back alone like that? Is there no space for two, three believers he said, Apostle, hey, we are living in the last days. Oh, we are living in a wicked war. He 
It could be that you could be driving that car alone. And if the devil had planned an accident, he could just get you there. But not when there are three, four, five believers in that car. With a corporate anointing. No. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell. The reason why they can't prevail is because the church is together. Am I speaking to somebody today? Dorcas was restored to life because she identified with the corporate fellowship of believers. Judas died in condemnation. Why? He isolated himself. He left the table. Your preservation and the protection of your destiny is when you identify with the fold of believers. In this season and time, God is restoring the place of corporate fellowship.